when we're working with implicit differentiation, we don't have to stop at the first derivative. We can find higher order derivatives as well. So here's an example. We want to find the first derivative, and once we found the first derivative, we'll go ahead and find the second derivative. So to find the first derivative, we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. First off, we have a product of two functions of x, so we'll take the derivative of the first, which is 1, times the second, plus the first, which is x, times the derivative of the second. Let's see, and then we have the derivative of x squared makes 2x, and that's equal to 0. So we have x times dy dx equals, I'm going to move these terms over, negative 2x minus y. So dy dx is equal to negative 2x minus y all over x. So we've got our first derivative. Now we can find our second derivative. We'll just take the derivative of both sides with respect to x again. If we take the derivative of dy dx with respect to x, that's the second derivative of y with respect to x. And then over here, we can use the quotient rule. So the quotient rule says you take the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. So the derivative of the top is um, negative 2 minus dy dx times the bottom gives me an x. And um, then we have minus the top, which if you subtract this negative, you're going to get 2x plus 2x plus y. So minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is 1, all over the bottom squared. So all over x squared. So we have that the second derivative is equal to, um, if I distribute here, we have negative 2x and negative x times dy dx. And then we have plus 2x plus y all over x squared. If I copy that up here, I can combine some like terms. We've got a negative 2x and a plus 2x. So we really have for the second derivative y minus x dy dx all over x squared. Now we have the second derivative, but it's in terms of x and y and also dy dx. So it'd be nicer if we could get rid of that dy dx. And what we can do is to use what we know dy dx is to substitute in here. Then we'll have that the second derivative is y. Um, we have minus x times this. So that's going to be plus x times 2x plus y all over x, all over x squared. So notice what I had a negative that I could factor out of both of these and cancel with that negative in front of the x. Now the x top and bottom cancels. So we have that the second derivative of y with respect to x is y plus um, 2x plus y all over x squared, which is going to be 2y plus 2x all over x squared for that second derivative. So we now have that um, that we have uh, d squared y dx squared is equal to 2 times x plus y all over x squared for our second derivative. Now we've got one more trick that we can pull to simplify this. And I notice that if we were to multiply this by x, we'd have x squared plus xy. But because of the equation, we know x squared plus xy is 10. So I have this idea. I'm going to multiply this top and bottom by x. That's going to give me 2. And then x times x makes x squared. And x times y makes xy all over x cubed. And now x squared plus xy is 10. So we have 2 times 10. That's the same thing as 10, right? 2 times 10 would be 20 over x cubed. So we get a nice um, version of the second derivative by noticing that we could create the original equation xy plus x squared um, by multiplying top and bottom by x. That allowed us to simplify just a little bit.